my name is Marius, I'm an amateur 18th century tailor, and today I'm starting on a kind of scary project. Basically, I started to get involved with a local reenactment group this year, and I'm putting together my first ever kit for it. It's gonna be a bit outside my comfort zone, because I've done a lot of 18th century American fashion, but I haven't done much Scottish fashion, and there are some major differences. I'm going to be involved with a couple different sides of this reenactment group, however, the first kit that I'm going to put together is... A Highland Jacobite Impression. In case you couldn't tell from the title of this video, the first article I'm going to make is a pair of stockings or kilt hose. This tutorial will hopefully not only be useful for sewing kilt hose, but also for regular 18th century stockings. Stockings at this point of history would not have been knit in the round, but would have been sewn from woven or knit fabric. I'm sewing mine from woven fabric. I thought I'd start filming before I started the research portion, just so that I could include it in this video. However, I'm going to go now, do some reading, and I'll be back when I have a couple of pages of notes on bog bodies. Alright, little research update. I spent most of this morning going through the sources that my friends sent me. I think I'm going to use the cut of men's clothes for some of the trickier bits of tailoring. So the jacket and the waistcoat will definitely be heavily based off those patterns. I'm also going to be using a resource they sent me on how to put together the stockings, which I can link in the description if you'd like to use that as well. And most interestingly, I went through some papers on the Arnish Moor bog body, and I think my impression will be pretty heavily based on the clothing remnants that they found with that body. The Arnish Moor bog body is a bog body discovered in 1964 in Arnish Moor near Stornoway, Scotland. The body is that of a young man in his early 20s, evidently a murder victim, as evidenced by traumatic injuries to the base of his skull. The body itself was not preserved too well. It was noted at the time that the skeleton had been reduced to, and I quote, the consistency of rubbery seaweed. That phrase has haunted me since I read it. However, his personal belongings and some articles of woolen clothing were quite well preserved, including a jacket, a shirt, an undershirt, a bonnet, and a pair of stockings. It's worth noting that his clothing was heavily worn and ragged and had been repeatedly mended. For example, one of his stockings had been worn so badly that the foot had clearly been replaced in a different colored wool. I will be drawing on this find a lot more heavily for future parts of the project, namely the shirts and the jacket. However, I will be using it in conjunction with instructions by Rebecca Manthe to make the stockings. The documents I read did leave me with some questions though, especially about the seams, how to sew them up, and how to finish them, so I decided to message some members of my reenactment group and ask for help. Here's what I got back. No evidence on stitching. There is very little left of 18th century Highland clothing to go on other than illustrations, paintings, and descriptions. Pardon me while I go scream into a pillow. I need that documentation. I need everything documented. I can't live like this. I also got so caught up in my research that I pretty much forgot to eat today, so I'm taking a quick emergency break for tea and a toasty. Now I'm going to start drafting my pattern. There are a couple of ways of doing this. I'm going to draft mine on paper, and I'll link an article with instructions which will walk you through the process if you'd like to go down that route. However, I know that Morgan Donna put out a video on sewing medieval hosen, hose, that's what it's called, yes. <sighs> and she uses a duct tape system to draft her pattern. She used a duct tape cast of her leg, which she then cut apart, flattened out onto paper, and used to create her pattern pieces. While her pattern pieces are shaped quite differently, I think the basic technique is still useful, so I'll link that video as well in case that's a route you want to go down. If you do use the duct tape route, let me know how it turns out, I'm very curious. Anyway, I'll end up with two pattern pieces. One is the leg, top of the foot, and heel of the foot, all in one piece, and the other is the sole of the foot. There'll be a short seam under the heel, and a seam along the back of the leg. After I put together a mock-up, I made some changes to the pattern, shortening the sock a little bit and making the ankle a bit wider. Honestly, the fit around the ankle isn't going to be great, as you need the ankle to be a little bit loose and baggy just so that you can fit your heel through it. Next up is my favorite part, fabric choice. I'll be using this brown and black wool that I ordered online to make my stockings. If you're wondering what you should use for your stocking, I recommend using 100% wool. If you're portraying a Highlander or a Scot, you can use a plaid, but keep it simple. Two colors are less, a lot less complex than the plaid you'd use for your belted plaid. Other than that, you can also get away with using a plain wool, especially if you're portraying a lower class individual. The socks on the bog body, for example, were made out of a kind of a tan oatmeal colored wool. If you're not portraying a Scot, then I recommend also going with a plain wool. 
However, I've seen documentation for socks that are sewn with white gauze and colored bodies. Legs, colored legs, and white gauze. Next up, I'm cutting out the leg and the sole of my stocking. I'll be cutting these stockings on the bias to make sure they have a little stretch. To construct the stocking, I'm first going to fold the leg piece in half lengthwise and pin along the back seam, stopping at the end of the heel seam where it meets this line. Then I'll sew that seam up. On one stocking, I used a back stitch. On the other, I used a space back stitch because I got a little more confident in the pattern. I know they don't match, but I don't think it matters too much in the long run. Then I'm gonna cut along the lines that I've marked. The bits of these foot pieces that look like wings get inserted into these slits as gores. Here's how they look when they're sewn in place. Then the rest of the sole gets pinned and sewn into place. I'll be leaving the seams unfinished. So I'm using a fabric which will not fray and I'll be trimming the seam allowances quite short. The top of the sock will also not be hemmed. Again, it's important to use a fabric that won't fray. I turn them inside out, slap a pair of garters on them, and you're done. Fun fact, the artist wore bog body stockings were not held up with proper garters, but with strips of cut fabric, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm too broke to portray rich people. Roll the glamour shot. there we go. That's my process for putting together a pair of 18th century cloth stockings or a pair of Jacobite kilt hose. I'll be back with another video soon to talk you through the next part of my kit. In the meantime, you can find my Instagram in the description. And I know it's a terrible time to ask something like this, but I've also linked my coffee, ko-fi, however it's pronounced account. So if you're feeling generous, you can support my work for the price of a cup of coffee. Also, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, stay safe and see you soon.